Hello and welcome to section 6, Creating and Managing App Stacks. In this section we're going to concentrate on how to create and manage your App Stack application layers. We're going to focus on the aspects of creating and managing App Stack application layers. We will start by creating our first App Stack and we will capture Notepad++. Next, we're going to look at how to capture MS Office applications and some of the best practice around the capture process before demonstrating this by capturing Microsoft Visio. With app stacks now captured, we will look at how to assign them to end users. Now we have app stacks created, we are going to look at some of the management tasks such as editing, updating and deleting app stacks. In the final piece of the app stack management, we will look at how to unassign already assigned app stacks, how to import existing app stacks and then how to ensure that the data store inventory that the app stacks are stored on is all up to date. We are going to take a few minutes to talk about the build process. In this section we're going to follow three distinct steps, create, assign and deliver. So let's just take a look at the creation process for building a new app stack. This is shown in the diagram on screen. Before we start the actual capture process, we first need to make sure that we have a cleanly built virtual desktop machine complete with an up to date and patched operating system that we can use as our provisioning machine. Best practice is to use a virtual desktop machine regardless as that way you can take a snapshot before you install the applications and then easily roll back to the original image for any subsequent provisioning you want to run. Best practice would also be to create your app stacks on the same operating system that is going to be used for the live deployment. So for example if you're deploying app stacks to a Windows 7 virtual desktop machine then create those app stacks using the same Windows 7 operating system. Likewise, if you have Windows 8.1 or Windows 10 in your environment or are using an RDSH server to publish applications, then use that operating system to capture your app stacks. We then initiate the create a new app stack from the app volumes manager and then select the provisioning machine as we just discussed. The empty virtual disk is attached to the provisioning machine and we can now start the installation of the application. Once we've completed the install and made any configuration changes, we can finish the capture process and reboot the provisioning machine. The virtual disk now containing our captured application is detached from the provisioning machine and is now ready to be assigned to end users. Now that we understand the process for creating an app stack, the diagram on screen shows the provisioning process in a graphical representation. So now we understand the processes behind creating an app stack and the provisioning process in more detail, let's move on to the first video of this section and build our first app stack. So let's get started and capture our first app stack using Notepad++ as the application we want to capture and layer. As a quick recap, to create the app stack for Notepad++, we're going to capture the installation process using the provisioning desktop machine. So let's now go and capture our first app stack, and this one will be for Notepad++. If we switch to our App Volumes Manager console, so we've logged in for the first time since we've installed it and configured it, and this is the first screen you will see. So here is the dashboard. You'll see an overview of the licensing, how many users are using the system, how many users are registered with the App Volumes Manager, computer utilization, and then app stack utilization, how many app stacks have been used. We can also see here the most recent logged in users, our administrator, recent boot up computers, there is our Windows 7 provisioning machine, which we installed the App Volumes agent on in the previous video and the most recent app stack attachments. As you can see currently we don't have any because we've not yet built any app stacks. Along the top here we can see our volumes, our app stacks, writables, attachments, assignments and applications. If we go to the directory tab we can see the users online, we can see the users registered with the system, we can see our admin account there, the computers are registered, app volumes, groups and our OUs. As yet we have nothing in these. If we go to infrastructure, this is our machines, the machines that are registered with our app volumes manager, then our storage, our local data store, and then the VMS storage groups that we will cover later on. Activity just tells us pending actions, activity log, system messages, and server log, etc. Then the final tab is the configuration tab. This is what we covered in the initial configuration tasks video. Let's continue to build our first app stack. We can start by clicking volumes, then we click our app stacks tab. We see here our writer balls, etc. But we're going to concentrate on app stacks. Currently, we don't have any, so we're going to click on create the app stack. 
first of all, we are going to give this lab stack a name. So we're going to capture and provision Notepad++. So we type in here Notepad++. Then from the storage, we're going to from the drop down choose our local data store and the path of which the folder is within our data store and then which template we're going to use. By default, we're going to use the app stack template, which is 20 gigs in provisioned. And then we can give this a description. We're just going to call this Notepad 7.3.2. So we know which version this is. Once you're happy with that, then click the create button. We see the confirm create app stack box. So we can perform in the background. We're going to wait for completion. We click the create button. So now we're creating our app stack. So we're taking a copy of that 20 gigs in provision to template. So now that app stack is created. So we can see here we have our notepad plus plus. We can see the file name, the data store, it's unprovisioned. Um, and handily here, we see the next step, select provisioning VM. So it's given us a bit of a clue as to what to do next. So here we can a, either delete the app stack or in our case, we're going to click provision. Now we need to go and find our provisioning machine. So this is our Windows 7 provisioning machine that we installed the agent on. So in here, we're going to find that box. We just type Win 7. Then we're going to click the search button. Then we come back. We found that particular machine. So here's our Windows 7 provisioning box. When it's created, it's available, i.e. agent loaded. Select the radio button and then click provision. Confirm start provisioning. So we're going to start provisioning for AppStack Notepad++ on computer PVO Lab Win 7 provisioning. So we're going to click the Start Provisioning button. So we're attaching the AppStack to the computer. So that 20 gig template now gets attached to that Windows 7 box. And we go back to our AppStack's main screen. And we can see here it's telling us the next step is please install applications on the provisioning computer. Remember here, don't click complete yet. So we switch to that provisioning computer. We now see the app volumes dialog box saying we are now in provisioning mode and cl only click OK once you've completely installed the applications. So remember, do not click OK at this stage. Otherwise, that will tell app volumes that you've finished installing and it would cut the installation there. If you have a quick look in our disk manager screen, we can see here our standard C drive, um, our DVD drive, and then here's our disk one CV apps, so cloud volume apps. This is our 20 gig hard drive, that's our attached template where the application is going to be provisioned to. Again, remember here, don't click OK yet. We need to go ahead and install the application first. So we're going to install Notepad++ on this particular machine and capture that as an app stack. So let's go to our folder, our shared folder, our software installers double click on Notepad++. One thing to remember as well is that before we actually started this installation and put this machine into provisioning mode, uh, we took a snapshot of the machine. So we can roll back and make sure that we've got the completely clean machine to start from each time we installed an application. So that just ensures that the registry is nice and clean. There's no files left over from previous applications. And more importantly, you don't cause any conflicts between different types of application installation. So now the open file security warning box, we just click run on there. Notepad++ installer launches a standard. So we're just going to go and choose our language. We'll choose English and click OK. And next on the welcome screen, I agree to the license agreement. Destination folder, we leave exactly the same. App volumes will automatically redirect the install files for you. Choose components. What do we want to install from Notepad++? Click Next. We're going to create a desktop shortcut. We're not going to save any app data or any plugins. So we'll just click on the Install button and then Notepad installs. So you'll see the icon appear on the desktop. We're not going to run from here. We're going to click Finish and we close that folder down. Again, don't click OK on here yet. We're not quite finished because what you can do is if you launch Notepad++, go to Settings, uh, just go into the Preferences, uh, change things like Lock. We can change the big icons, change the language again. Um, so anything that you change in here, i.e. any configuration settings, get saved as part of the provisioning process. So they get captured with the application and become part of it. So once you're happy with that, we close Notepad++ and then we can now click the OK button to finish. 
Installation complete. Yes, we finished. And we need to click yes to reboot the machine. So this is an app volumes initiated reboot just to finish capturing or provisioning that particular application. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on yes. Uh, application gets analyzed. Now it says your computer will reboot. Click OK. So now the machine will actually go through the reboot. So the machine is now just starting up. So Windows is loading. So now we rebooted. We have Control Alt Delete to log back in. Log back in as administrator, password. And now log back into our Windows 7 provisioning machine. So now we've rebooted, we've logged back in. Provisioning was successful, so your newly provisioned application is now ready to use. Uh, and it's also a reminder there, don't forget to revert your virtual machine back to that last known snapshot, the one before you took before you actually provisioned the new application. So click OK to close that window. And now we're going to switch back to our App Volumes Management console. So here's our App Volumes Manager screen again. So we can now see our Notepad++ App Stack provisioning screen. It says it's in provisioning status, which we know now is complete. So it says here, obviously, complete. So we're going to click on the complete button. Uh, we confirm the provisioning is complete. So we've finished installing applications for Notepad++. So we click. And now we can see that Notepad++ is provisioned. So if we look at locations, we can see where this is. This is on our local data store. If we look at applications, we can now see here Notepad++ knows it's 64-bit and it's 7.3.2. So there we have now completed our installation and our capture of an app stack.